Now, President Biden is also taking the time to mark the death of former Soviet Union President Mikhail Gorbachev, who died Tuesday at the age of 91. He is credited for changing the map of Europe, ending the Cold War, and bringing down the Berlin Wall. In a statement, President Biden reflected on his own experience working with Gorbachev while Biden was in the Senate, adding, quote, as leader of the USSR, he worked with President Reagan to reduce our two countries' nuclear arsenals to the relief of people worldwide praying for an end to the nuclear arms race. After decades of brutal political repression, he embraced democratic reforms, end quote. Joining me now is Paul Danieri, an expert on Eastern European and post-Soviet politics. He is a political science and public policy professor at the University of California, Riverside, and also the author of several books. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, now, it strikes me that Gorbachev has a much different reputation here in the West than he does in the East. How would you compare and contrast those two? Yeah, in the West, he's the guy who ended the Cold War. He's the guy who brought freedom uh, to Eastern Europe and to Russia. Uh, in the Soviet Union, he's the person who destroyed the Soviet Union as a great power, uh, led to the fragmentation of the Soviet Union, and led to a period of immense uh, economic hardship uh, in that region. Well, and I know that one of the reasons or one of the, the purposes that uh, Vladimir Putin said he had when coming to yeah. power was to kind of undo or, or yeah. to try to redo the Soviet Union and, and sort of end Gorbachev's legacy there. He wants to bring things back to the Soviet Union. He thinks it was a huge geopolitical issue in history. That's so right. is there no Vladimir Putin without Mikhail Gorbachev? Job. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a, an astute observation. Uh, in many ways, for Putin himself, and for many Russians who support Putin, uh, the agenda for the last 30 years, or at least the last 20 years, has been to undo everything that really began with Gorbachev in 1985 and sort of ended with the, uh, the Yeltsin era in, in post-Soviet Russia in 1999. Well, he introduced glasnost and perestroika, and those are two non-English words. So please explain to us what they were and why they were important to his legacy and to especially a lot of the peace that we saw in the 1990s. Yeah, when, sure. When, when uh, uh, Gorbachev became general secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in 1985, the Soviet uh, economy was gradually sliding downhill. It was the previous era was known as the era of stagnation. So he wanted to transform the Soviet economy to modernize it. And transformation in Russian is perestroika. So that's where this word perestroika came from, to transform the Soviet economy. He realized he couldn't do it because of the opposition uh, among entrenched elites and the, the, uh, what was called the nomenklatura, the entrenched bureaucracy. And so he needed uh, more openness to criticize them. And the Russian word for openness is glasnost. And so he encouraged people to criticize. And that encouragement of criticism really is what began to open the floodgates towards what eventually became the loss of the Soviet empire in Eastern Europe and the loss of uh, uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union. Because when he said, okay, go ahead and criticize these guys so that we can get some reform done, people criticize those, those bureaucrats, but they also uh, criticize repression. They criticize the Soviet empire and in much to Gorbachev's surprise, people like the Ukrainians, the Latvians, Lithuanians, and so on said, oh, and by the way, we don't want to be part of the Soviet Union anymore. We want our countries to be independent. Well, I know that he's responsible for this nuclear drawdown and, and, and really peace in the 90s, but also Russia during the 90s was terrible. It was an economic freefall, and there were a lot of social issues there. And I know you said in the East they don't view him as a success, but really worldwide, did he just help us, or was he a good leader? I, I don't even know if there is an objective good out there, but you're the expert on this topic. I just want your opinion. Well, I, I don't think there's any doubt it was good for the world overall. Uh, people in Russia, and, and, and I spend a lot of time in Ukraine, people in Ukraine, uh, you know, for them, the collapse of the Soviet Union was, was just about the best thing that ever happened in their history, because it ended uh, you know, centuries of oppression, and that's true throughout that region. The Russians feel like they lost their superpower status. I should say that the economic collapse that happened in the 1990s um, didn't really begin with Gorbachev. He got this economy that, that had been stagnating under Brezhnev for 20 plus years, and he had to do something. And so the question that's uh, still a hypothetical question at this point is, is, was there a way to reform that very broken economy without going through an incredibly difficult period? And uh, I, I'm sort of skeptical. I think that at that point, there was no way for it to be fixed without something like the 1990s happening. But, but uh, there clearly were things that could have been done better. 
All right, that's Paul Donieri. He's a poli sci professor at UC Riverside. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.